Hi, hey everybody. I'm just checking in today um, to do a little bit of a test for some new software uh, that I'm going to be using for streaming from now on. So I just want to give it a shot. But um, I figure while I'm here, I might as well do a little bit of uh, a quick presentation or something. So I'm going to do something I know really, really well, which is the Canadian reinforcement of Hong Kong. Now, there's lots of um, reasons uh, why Canadians were sent to Hong Kong. I, you can write a dissertation on it, which I didn't exactly do, but it was a huge part of, of my dissertation. So I've kind of decided to um, look at the short term reasons as I want to call it, or the like the direct causes of why um, Canadians were sent to Hong Kong. Uh, it's a fairly quick process uh, when it happened, but uh, like I said, there's a lot of reasons why uh, this happens. Um, uh, for the long-term reasons, but uh, the short-term reasons are fairly straightforward, except for a few elements, but we'll uh, we'll get to those uh, and we can see kind of um, what's going on there. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen here. So the real reason um, of why uh, Canadians were sent to Hong Kong is because of this guy right here. Uh, his name's uh, Arthur Edward Grant, uh, Gresset. He was a Canadian-born general uh, in the British Army. Uh, he had attended Royal Tilton Military College in Kingston uh, with uh, actually Henry Criard, who we'll get to in a quick minute. Um, but uh, so he's a very interesting individual, trains in Canada, um, and then goes to Britain uh, after his uh, time at uh, RMC. And he... Uh, He's in the British Army during the First World War, uh, takes on a bunch of commands, rises up the ranks, uh, ends up in Hong Kong, uh, commanding there for just over two years. Yeah, just over, no, after three, sorry. Oh, just over three years. Um, and he's sent um, back to Britain um, in summer 1941. So the easiest way to get back to Britain back then was to go uh, from Hong Kong anyway, sorry, to uh, Canada. So you go through Canada, um, come in on the West Coast, take a train across, and then go across the Atlantic. It's faster than going the other way. So during his time uh, in Canada, he met with um, an old classmate of his at RMC, uh, Henry Criard, who is quite well known within Canadian military history circles. Just one second here. Still playing with these functions, uh, so a bit of a test. Uh, so this is him. Uh, he's fairly well known, as I said. Uh, so him and Grant uh, Gresset meet. Uh, now the details are a little sketchy uh, of what that meeting was about. Uh, so Criar is eventually questioned at a um, judiciary inquiry uh, that's set up uh, in 1942. Um, that uh, he can't attend because he's in Britain uh, commanding Canadian troops. But anyway, he sends written answers uh, to the questions. Uh, and he mentions that him and Gresset do not discuss uh, Canadian troops going to Hong Kong uh, at all in this meeting, uh, which is interesting because uh, the later events that happen, it would seem that these two old classmates who had known each other for a very long time and had been in correspondence, um, not regularly, as far as I could tell from my research, but enough to know each other still. We're not discussing this issue, which to me, I think is interesting because they meet possibly several times. And, and why I say possibly, again, is the details are kind of sketchy. Um, but, um, and this is kind of the well-known part of the story of Hong Kong and the reinforcement is, is the gresset Kriar conversation and their background. And this is, you can kind of find in really any book on the subject or any kind of general history on, of Canada and the Second World War. Uh, we'll talk about this kind of stuff. Now, the details that kind of get forgotten are that there's a third individual involved. Again, also very well known in Canada in the Second World War. This man, uh, Jail Ralston, he's the defense minister, uh, had been previously in one of King's older governments, uh, but he's defense minister at the time. So he meets with um, Criar and Grant, uh, Gresset, sorry, uh, 
possibly a couple of times. Again, we don't know because none of the individuals were really willing to talk about it after the fact. Um, they really don't want any sort of blame for what happens. Um, large part of that is probably because of the treatment that the Canadian troops received uh, in Japanese prison camps. Uh, the, the, the brutal treatment, the malnutrition, disease, slave labor, uh, murders, uh, physical beatings, that kind of thing. So that kind of really was avoided by a lot of politicians and trying to, you know, pass the buck in a lot of ways. Uh, so Ralston keeps a, a date book uh, at the time, uh, which is interesting because I've been able to look at it. It's just very sparse, very, you know, meeting this time, meeting this time, lunch with so-and-so, lunch with so-and-so. But, um, and kind of what part of the dissertation I did, again, is looking at uh, when this was. So there's no clear evidence that it's one particular date. Um, but I was able to look at um, Ralston's uh, date book and, and then also cross-reference that with um, Gresset's coming back from Hong Kong. So he leaves, uh, so sorry, so Gresset leaves uh, Hong Kong uh, on the 20th of July uh, and uh, after his successor Mulpey, who's also very well known with all this stuff, um, takes over. So it, it can't be before that, obviously. Uh, so it's going to take some time to cross the Pacific. Um, I'm not too sure how long, because again, there's no record of Grant really talking about any of this stuff, which is unfortunate because I really wish there was. Uh, but what is interesting is in Ralston State Book, there's two dates missing, uh, two weekdays, uh, the 28th and 29th of July. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, and that was rather unusual for his state book. Around that time, there's always something recorded whether it be a meeting or a lunch or what have you, there's always something. Uh, so there's nothing here at all. Um, also, there's no uh, entries for the 3rd and 9th of August, but those are Sundays. So that was an unusual within the day book. So, so this kind of um, raises the question, was it then on the 20th, 29th? Probably not, because that's too long. Uh, sorry, too short of a time to get to Hong Kong, uh, back from Hong Kong, sorry. So, what is also on I term suspicious is that on the 4th of August, uh, Monday, the date is also missing. Uh, and this is enough time back given the transportation available in the 1940s, um, even during wartime, to get to get Gresset to Canada. So I'm thinking that August 4th, 1941 is when they meet uh, and talk about this stuff. Again, no record of it at all, no record of the talk, none of that stuff. So it's, it's, it's really interesting um, that this date is just, you know, straight up missing from a date book that records all kind of minute de details about, about nothing. Um, so again, this kind of raises questions and, and kind of takes away from the legitimacy of the claims that they don't discuss um, Hong Kong and Canadian troops going there. Now, uh, so Chris it has these meetings, apparently him and Creed are, as Creer later admits, just talk about Hong Kong generally speaking. They don't talk about Canadians reinforcing, just that that uh, Gresset wanted Hong Kong to be in reinforced. And again, this is um, another part of my work is I do look at that and Gresset does want more reinforcements. And this goes on for a long, long time, uh, years even. He's asking pretty much his entire time as commander for more troops, more something, or battalions was is what he ideally wanted, uh, but he was never given that. Uh, so, again, it seems that Gresset always had in mind doing something to strengthen uh, the Hong Kong defenses. So, uh, so Gresset gets back to uh, Britain on the 3rd of September, or thereabouts, uh, and then meets uh, with the British Chiefs of Staff to kind of give his, you know, uh, report upon returning after what he learned, all that kind of stuff. So, he makes a suggestion uh, to the Chiefs of Staff Committee, and this is again recorded, that uh, Gresset, uh, sorry, that Canadians uh, are willing to reinforce Hong Kong. Um, and he doesn't say how or who says this in Canada. He just kind of alludes to it, which is kind of a problem when it's, uh, yes, Canada is still uh, very much part of the Commonwealth. Things are different back then, but it's again, still much of an issue. Uh, so, and then the kind of events kind of proceed very quickly after this. Um, there's a telegram sent uh, from the Dominion's office to Ottawa asking if they'll send troops to reinforce Hong Kong on the 19th September. Um, uh, 
Prime Minister King takes his time, as he always did, trying not to do anything too fast to kind of cause some problems uh, or avoid problems if necessary, or sorry, to avoid problems at all costs. Uh, so he does so. Um, but eventually, and this is where Rawson kind of comes back into the story and a lot of the narratives, uh, Rawson's very much in favor of this. Uh, and King doesn't want to make a decision without Ralston, who's away in the United States at the time. So they wire Ralston. Actually, they send a... Um, a colonel uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but uh, to him in the United States uh, to give him kind of the, lo the lowdown uh, of all of what's going on uh, with this reinforcement. So, and Ralston gives his support right away and talks to Kriar, uh, who also gives his support. And, and then this goes ahead in early October. Uh, and then they start to organize from there. Uh, so this is just kind of the, again, like I said, the short reasoning um, of what's going on, who's involved. Um, this stuff is covered in a lot of books but details are a bit lacking. Um, so I do think, and I will say outright state, I do think Kriar and Grasset, at least those two, discuss Canadian troops um, being uh, available uh, to reinforce the garrison uh, in 1941. Uh, and also I do think, again, that Ralston plays a role in this. He wasn't at all the meetings as far as I can tell. Again, it's hard to be conclusive on any of this, uh, but uh, he does. Um, have a role to play here. And, and he's often forgotten in a lot of narratives and a lot of the books that have been written on this are, he's often missing, which I think is a mistake. Uh, so I included him in mine uh, and any work I do on this. So I think he's an important character to remember in this. Not that I'm blaming anyone. That's not the, what I'm going for here. It's not a blame. It's just kind of cover the details of these short-term reasons why um, Canadians are sent to Hong Kong uh, in 1941, which again, has been a controversial decision ever since. Um, I mean, it's still discussed discuss to this day. It's the work I do academically. Um, so it's a very important one, but this kind of looking at it from this angle, uh, the, sort of the short-term reasoning behind it, it's a very short period of time, which uh, I would term as a problem. There's very little discussion with the war cabinet, which is again, another problem. I mean, things like garrisoning other islands get tons of discussion. I mean, the garrisoning of Iceland, which was in no way attacked or really in any real danger of German invasion, is discussed, I think, a dozen times. Hong Kong's discussed twice uh, or three times or no, twice in any sort of detail. So it's it, it's an interesting uh, dichotomy here of what's going on with Hong Kong. And a lot of details are missing. And I think, that, again, like I said at the beginning, that does have to do with um, what happens afterwards, which kind of frames our understanding of this, um, because that's what certain people wanted. Uh, again, this isn't some sort of conspiracy theory here. Uh, it's just there's interesting details uh, about what's missing, what's there, and who says what, and also what happens. So again, it just kind of adds that sort of seed of doubt, which I think is very well um, proportioned here. So uh, that's kind of it for what, today. Thanks everybody for watching. I just kind of wanted to test and see how my software works and I'll go about doing it so we can do this better in the future when I have other people on. Uh, we can share all kinds of fun stuff with you through doing this. So it's a good test. Thanks for watching the test. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like my videos, comment on them. I'm um, kind of, you can comment below, if you could comment below, sorry, about what you think about the reinforcement of Hong Kong. Uh, whether it's right or wrong, steeped in kind of a conspiracy. Was there a conspiracy? Was it the right thing to do? Uh, kind of give your comments on what you think is going on there uh, and kind of what that means now uh, would be great. So everyone have a good day and thanks for watching.